The first question asks, which paper originally proposed delay cord embedding? And it was the Packard et al. paper entitled Geometry from a Time Series. Technically, this paper didn't formally prove anything about delay cord embedding. It actually just mentioned delay cord embedding as an aside, that this might be something that people want to look into, and it might be useful, but they proposed a slightly different method. However, this was the first paper to bring up that the delay cord embedding process could be useful in reconstructing an attractor. The Sauer et al. 1991 paper entitled Embedology really extends and improves on Talkin's theorem. This is the paper that relaxed the embedding restriction from m greater than 2 dimensions to m greater than 2 times the capacity dimension. It also provided several other theoretical proofs and discussions that were necessary. The Kennel et al. paper, titled Determining Embedding Dimension Using a Geometric Instruction, is the original False Nearest Neighbor paper, and Constant and Schreiber's 1997 book entitled Nonlinear Time Series Analysis is a very general textbook on nonlinear time series analysis. For question two, the delay cord embedding machinery only works in both theory and practice if you have an infinite amount of noise-free data. Unfortunately, this is false. If this were true, as we can never have an infinite amount of data, let alone noise-free data, so we could never use delay cord embedding in practice. Question three states, the delay cord embedding machinery only works in theory if you have an infinite amount of noise-free data but can still be useful in practice even if those conditions are not met. And this is thankfully true. If this were not true, we could not use delay cord embedding in practice. Luckily, even though this infinite amount of noise-free data is never met in practice, delay cord embedding is still a very useful piece of machinery in the field of nonlinear time series analysis. For problem four, we're assuming that our time series only has a thousand data points. Question A asks, it's fine to embed this time series in as many dimensions as this false near neighbor method suggests is appropriate. And this is false. The rule of thumb I generally use is you should have 10 to the m data points. So in this case, you really shouldn't choose an m any higher than 2 or 3. If you chose to embed in 4 or 5 dimensions, for example, you would need 10 or 100,000 data points respectively. This doesn't mean, however, that the false near neighbor method will never work for this time series. For example, the time series may be just fine to embed in 2 or 3 dimensions, and in this case, this method would work just fine. So b is false. And part C asks, you really should not embed it in more than two or maybe three dimensions, and this is true. Since a thousand is ten cubed, I would feel just fine embedding this in two or three dimensions. For question five, repeating the same nonlinear time series analysis procedures separately on chunks of your data set, for example the first half and then the second half, can tell you one of two effects. It can tell you, you have inadequate data, or it can tell you, you have a non-stationary system. But it can't really tell you which one of these is occurring. For example, if you did an analysis on a full time series, and then you did an analysis on the first and second half, and you got the same answer, then you could probably assume that you have a stationary time series and you had an adequate amount of data. However, if you got a different answer on the first and second half as compared to the full time series, you couldn't tell if the time series is non-stationary and a transition had occurred between the first and second half, or if you have inadequate data going to half the time series. Repeating the same nonlinear time series analysis procedures on half the time series or small chunks of the time series is a really great idea, but if you get different answers, you need to be very careful about how you interpret these. It could just be inadequate data, but could also be non-stationary in the system. In either case, more exploration needs to occur.